What's the word, y'all? The season is wrapped, and the Denver Nuggets are our NBA champions, man. Congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. This was a ridiculous run, and I'm here to talk about it. But before we do that, let me get my flowers to the Miami Heat because th there weren't many people in the world that thought going into the play-in that this Miami Heat team would go on a run that would eventually have them in the NBA Finals. They lost the first play-in game. They were one minute away from losing the second play-in game to the Bulls. They beat Giannis Dettacumpo's Miami, Miami, Milwaukee Bucks, who have, you know, Giannis being the best player in the league or one of the best players in the league, the, the favorite to win it all. They beat New York, who a lot of people thought would be able to beat them because of the depth. And then they go and they beat the Boston Celtics. The Celtics were a heavy favorite. So they just went on a ridiculous streak. One that I will never forget. One for the ages and ultimately came up short. But I do want to get my flowers, man. This is a team that has been respected throughout the course of recent history. But this year felt different than any other year in the past. Where last year I feel like the Miami had a lot of respect. I think they were the one seed. The year before that they had respect. But going into it as an 8 seed, especially an 8 seed that lost a playing game. Nobody gave them a chance, me included. I was asked while I was while I was watching this game between the Bulls and the Miami Heat. I was on the Twitter show with Channing Fry with with Taylor Rooks, and they asked me about it. As a Bulls fan, like, how, how does it feel to be in this game? And we were winning at this moment. How does it feel to be in this game? I'm like, it's cool, but no matter who wins, we're we're playing a game. What did I say? We're we're racing to a stop sign because in my mind. The Miami Heat or the Chicago Bulls, neither of those teams had what it take to take out the Bucks, and they did that, and they took out the Knicks, and they took out the, the Celtics, and then ultimately they came up uh, short in this one, even though they made it a game, man. Jimmy Butler taking over for that couple minutes stretch, you're like, what was this for the first four games? Whatever. You know, it was a game. It was an ugly game. It was a sloppy game, but it was a game nonetheless. Shout out to Miami Heat. I'm curious to see what happens now because they are a super expensive team, but th that's offseason talk. We'll get to that eventually. So I'm recording this as things are going on. I already see uh, that Nikola Jokic won the MVP. Obviously, we knew that. They just showed a clip of one of the Jokic brothers picking him up and, like, tossing him around, and he's smiling. Look, look, I'm watching this game with my fiancé and my daughter, and I'm like, I'm telling her, you know, like, Nikola Jokic is like this, this stoic dude. Keeps himself. He don't really talk to the media. He don't be, like, showing emotion other than on the court occasionally. He gets frustrated. We saw some of that today. He's not an emotional dude. But if there's any moment in time, to show emotion is today because you you the ch you just won the championship. There are tons and tons of great NBA players, average NBA players, whatever, that have never felt this moment. They've never got to the peak of, of basketball. So I'm like, if there's any moment to show emotion, it's this one. And what did he do? Buzzer sounding. Jamal Murray's crying. We're going to talk about that. Everybody's showing emotion. Jokic is just going to the Miami Heat. Good game. Good game. Good, I'm like, oh, oh, no. And then they giving the Larry O'Brien trophy. Jokic is all the way in the back. They tried, they showing pans around to the team trying to find Jokic. He a seven foot dude. You can't even see him because he's so far in the back with his with his wife and his daughter. So um, just, a, just a ridiculous run by Nikola Jokic. Like really one that I can't exaggerate more of how much of a ridiculous run it was individually for him. Uh, well, every stop of the way, where it seemed like out of these however many games that they played in this playoffs, he had one to two bad games. Think about that. One to two bad. This, these are humans. Even the best of the best have multiple bad games in the playoff run. That's why you have a seven-game series. Listen, if I have a bad game, too, it's cool because I got the rest of these games to make it up. Jokic didn't really had it. And then they had, he had a bad game last game, right? Bad game. Didn't matter. His team showed up and they won this series four to one. And this game was ridiculous from the very first moment. I, I known, I knew that this was going to be a sloppy, sloppy game because anybody that's won a championship always says that the, the game that is the hardest to win is the closeout game because there's so much pressure to just end the season to to finally win the championship. And it felt like that from the Denver Nuggets to start off with. Four turnovers in the first five possessions. They couldn't shoot for nothing. And luckily for them, the Miami Heat weren't really on much either. When they started off the game on a nice little run, but eventually went on their own droughts. And we eventually saw Jimmy Butler show up for like four minutes in the fourth quarter. I was like, oh man, is he about to force a game six? He did it. And selfish reasons, I'm kind of upset. I'm still going to Miami. We're still doing our last show because I saw some questions. The link will be in the description if you want to come to the Miami show Thursday night, June 15th. Um, people thought that because the series would end at five, that we wouldn't still be going to Miami for our show. We still in Miami with it. We just ain't got no basketball, but we gonna still perform to our best abilities. I mentioned this before that, that I am an emotional dude. You know, when I see somebody going through pain or anguish or whatever, I use, I usually empathize with that. So when the buzzer rings and they show Jamal Murray, he's on the ground, like crying. I feel for him, man. 
I feel for him. Tours ACL right after getting Aaron Gordon on the team. When Aaron Gordon was on the roster they first traded for, they, they was dangerous. Let's be real. They was dangerous. Tears his ACL. And then he, he goes to rehab or whatever. Last season, Jokic wins MVP with Compazzo as his starting point guard and all. Like, it wasn't a pretty team. And I remember going into the playoffs, there were some rumors that Jamal Murray had been cleared to play basketball again. But he decided, whether it be physically or mentally or whatever, he decided he was not ready to play basketball again. And it was a small, just a small little pocket. Small little pocket of criticism from NBA fans about that. Yoke is out here giving you an MVP performance. He just needs somebody to step up with him. He already got AG. Just give him one more body. He, he wasn't ready for that. That's cool. He comes back this season. First, first year back. This is the first year that they've had their collective core completely healthy. And they did it with no problems. With no problems. Anyway, um, he comes back after a smooth 20 points per game and then turns it up absolutely in the playoffs. I will never forget that conference finals from him where he was averaging 32 points per game and the Lakers didn't know what to do. They didn't know if they should put a guard on him. Should they put Jerry Vanderbilt on him? Should they do whatever? Should they switch it? Should they? they didn't know. He was dominating. So he went from where he thought that he was he thought he was damaged goods, y'all. Think about that. When he was injured, going through his rehab and everything, he thought that the different Nuggets were going to trade him because he was making this money and they wanted to win and he was contributing. So now for him to be an NBA champion and doing it not as a guy, as one of the guys. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't a guy. He was one of the guys. So just a great overall story. Um, and I, I'm happy for him. And I'm happy for Yoke. I'm happy for Uncle Jeff. Because it's been a long journey. For him and his Smith. It's been a long journey for those two dudes. Those two dudes collectively have played for like 30 teams. They've been working hard to get to this NBA championship. And they got it. But this this is like, I hope that this kills a lot of the the ex-player can't win the championship as the best player. I, I know it's, it's like by a per person basis. But actually, let me see if I can find the video. Ten months ago, there was a video that I titled, There Are Too Many Bad Nikola Jokic Takes. And in this video, I break down the argument from uh, this fella here. No disrespect to him, but I'm, I'm just saying in general. Where after the, the Nuggets get eliminated by the Warriors last season, how, how there was there is a narrative being pushed about him not being good enough to be the best player on a championship team. And 10 months ago, I knew that that was just a, a dumb, dumb, dumb take. I think most people knew that that was a dumb, dumb take because we're talking about a two-time NBA MVP. And in this video, uh, this, this podcast host is breaking down his reasons why he doesn't believe that Jokic could be the best player on the a championship team. Part of it was his usage rate being too high, which is just, in the moment, it was just such a dumb response to a guy that, like, if there's anybody in the league that I want to have the ball all the time, it's this dude. Because he's not strictly a basket getter. He's, he gets everybody involved. He, he says, this, what do you say? An assist makes two people happy. And that's the way he plays ball. So there's, if there's anybody that I want the ball in his hands the most, it's Nikola Jokic. But all of these narratives were created on the basis or on a series where Nikola Jokic didn't have his second best player and another player that's maxed, and that's Mike Boyd Jr. I ain't saying Mike Boyd Jr. the third best player. I'm giving that to Aaron Gordon. But he's missing two of his top three teammates. And there was conversations about him not being good enough to do it. And in a moment, it was crazy. I didn't know if this was going to be the year that they was going to do it, but I knew for sure that Jokic had what it take, even if he never did win it. Because there are so many different factors to win a championship. You have to, A, put the right pieces around any player. You can be the best player of all time, but if there ain't right pieces around you, you're, you're not going to be able to do it. Have the right pieces around you. Have the right path and the right amount of luck. You need skill, an immense amount of skill, but you need a little bit of luck. You just, it's just objectively true. Every single championship run has benefited from a little bit of luck. Whether that been an injury from an opposing team or whatever. So to say that a player can't be the best on a championship team just feels weird because it, it things just have to break right. Especially for a guy of his caliber. It just felt like an asinine argument 10 months ago. And I, it feels even worse now if you probably this do because it, the first season of them being completely healthy, they did it. This is the first year. Like, I honestly thought that it would take some time. Because remember, Aaron Gordon got traded here. He played like eight games with Jamal Murray before he got injured. So now we're trying to put this core together. And yes, Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray, and Jokic have been playing together for, I think, four seasons now. But to add a guy like Aaron Gordon for the first time, I thought it might have taken a year or so. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Right path, right opportunity, and dominant performances from the best player in the league. Never been to Denver, but I will be there. 
Because a part of our tour, part of our tour is going to whatever city ended up winning it um, and doing a live show. So the, the season opening next year, hopefully I got tickets to the game. I get to see the ring ceremony and I'll be in Denver for the first time. Um, but for, for the fans, I, I like to see, I don't know, is, this, is Denver a small market? See, that just lets you know that the American school system has failed me. I don't know the size of Denver. Is it a small market team? Is it a big market team? Regardless, I'm just going to say not small market, big market, but a, a market or a team that hadn't had this level of success to finally be able to do it. Because you, you had to do the right things. It's not like they had the first overall pick every year or, or even once and they got the generational talent that event they didn't draft bra first overall you know what i'm saying they had to do it the hard way they drafted the two-time mvp with the 41st overall pick during a taco bell commercial they drafted jamal murray at i think seven they took a chance on michael porter jr who was the number one dude of his high school high school class but had multiple back surgeries before he entered the league and said you know what we believe in him we're going to empower him to play his game but also give him an opportunity, and we're going to use, what, the 14th over? I don't remember the exact pick. We're going to give him a chance. And it worked. This dates back to even before that, when they had to make the decision between Nikola Jokic and Yusuf Nurkic. That's how far back we're talking about. Man, I also have baseball on, and for some reason, MLB.com just auto-plays games without you saying That just scared me, by the way. Um, but for making that right decision in the moment, you know what I'm saying? They did a ton of right things. Now, it's not all perfect. Cause, cause they 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 did drop Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> they did drop Donovan Mitchell. You mean you feel me? Um, so it's not all perfect, but the things that they hit on, they really really hit on. And I was on a podcast um, a little while ago, not a little while ago. This is like three or four days ago, and they were asking me if I had a hundred dollars to put on the team to win a championship for next season, who would I put it on? And I put it on the Denver Nuggets. And most and mo part of that was because. They don't have any question marks other than Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown could get a bag from somebody because he was amazing all playoff run. He's the type of dude that's going to get more money than maybe what the different Nuggets can offer. But other than that, they're going to be able to bring back this core. And it seems like every other competing team, every other championship level team, at least right now on uh, June 12th, we don't know what free, uh, free agency or trade is going to look like. Every other team has major question marks, whether it be, can they re-sign this player? Do they trade this guy? Do they trade this pick? This one, this is the one team without any major decisions to make. Because Yoke is going to be good next season. Jamal Murray should be even better next season, considering he's going to have a full year under himself after the ACL tear. And the, all the other dudes will be there except for Bruce. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then they have the 20, uh, 39th, 37th overall pick this year. So I don't know. Can they draft another Bruce Brown? Can they draft uh, Christian Braun 2.0? Just they've done a really good job, even though they have had some misses. Like Zeke Nye. Zeke Nye is an NBA champion right now, but he couldn't play a single second other than garbage time. Um, a, a wrench that I didn't expect is DeAndre Jordan getting Game 5 NBA Finals minutes and not looking terrible. <laughs> And not looking terrible. Who who had that on a big old car? You know, I thought Reggie Jackson playing some minutes in Game Three was crazy. Nope, DeAndre Jordan because of the foul trouble with Nikola Jokic. Again, I'm just I'm just so happy. Um, and, and for the people that didn't enjoy the series, to each his own. But I have to remind you, it's not always about the destination. Sometimes it's about the journey. And I think this season alone was incredible. We had some great stories. We had some great moments. We saw two people drop 70 points this year. Two. We saw the Kings in their playoff drought. We saw an eight seed take out a one seed. We saw two, two play-in teams make it to the conference fight. Like, this season was incredible. And that's not even mentioning all the main moments that NBA Twitter's going through. Just the funniest moments of the season. It's not always about the destination. Sometimes it's about the journey. And the journey was great. And I would argue destination was cool, too. Because I enjoyed this series. So... Oh, man, I was going to say we might take a break, but there's no break to be taken because the NBA uh, draft is in 10 days. So we back on to it. And then we got Summer League after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Content is still flowing, man. Leave it a like, subscribe. If you're going to be in Miami, you got nothing to do on Thursday because ain't no game no more. Hit the link in the description, ttwtour.com, RSVP, free tour. Me and the guys, live podcast tape, podcast tape, and it should be a blast, man, for real.